Hey guys, welcome back to the video. Uh, today we're going to talk about the shimming between the fork lever and the swash plate sliding sleeve. Also the collective lever is what it's called sometimes. But uh, I found this wrong more than once on other aircraft that would come in and you could see this loose play. So if you grab the front of the fork lever or if you grab the cyclic levers on the side and you just grab them and you try to move them side to side, you'll see some play. Like you see that gap right there and then you see all that play. And also the bearing block has tons of play. Yeah, so we're gonna investigate that further, see what we come up with. All right, so if we start taking things apart, this is what we see. Once you take off the cyclic levers and you take off that bolt that holds the forked lever onto the sliding sleeve, that's where the shim and the washer stack up are. But this one, if you take a closer look, take a close look and you zoom in, you see that the shim is over that bearing the spacer on that bearing. So right there is the shim. That's not where it's supposed to be. See how it's gone over that inner race of the bearing? Yeah, so that's not right. So just real quick, we're gonna go look at the maintenance manual, figure one of the maintenance manual, and it shows the stack up right there, the bolt, the shim, and the washer. So anyway, if you just follow the installation instructions, look at the drawing, see that line? It shows the bolt going into the fork lever and then going into the sliding sleeve. Not complicated, but the wording isn't 100% great. It's not super great, not super accurate in the maintenance manual. It's better than it has been. They've revised it. Um, this right here is a preprint out of the maintenance manual. Anyway, it says install the fork lever onto the sliding sleeve, and then it gives you a note. It says the records in the next step are marks made during the removal procedure. Okay, so the removal procedure says, hey, keep the left stack up and the right stack up the same. Mark them to go back onto the left and the right. Anyway, if we go to the next step, it says, uh, yeah, right here, record. Use the records to install the washers 5 and 31, the shim washers 6 and 30, and the countersunk screws 8 and 29. They call those bolts countersunk screws. All right. All right, then we have a big caution right here, and the caution says risk of damage to the shim washers 6 and 30. If you install the washers incorrectly, you will increase the wear of the shim washers Make sure that the chamfer on the washer points towards the shim washer. Number five is a washer, and number six is the shim washer. All right, now if we continue, make sure that the chamfer, like, I, like the caution just said, make sure that the chamfer of the washer points to the shim washers. Okay, and then you install the screw. Nothing crazy, but look, that's the normal stack up right there. Countersunk screw with the shim washer. And then right after that is the regular washer. Uh, and that's the stack up. That's how it's supposed to go together. Uh, I don't have a good um, picture of the chamfer on the washer, but right there in the radius on that bolt or the countersunk screw, they call it, it's a big, it's a big rounded radius. So if you put the washer on first, do you see that giant gap there? That means it doesn't go there. That does have a chamfer. So if you flip it over, it will be closer, but it will still have a space. That means it's not flush up against that countersunk screw is what they call it. See there, the shim washer is a lot wider and the, the regular washer is narrower. Okay, so that's why the shim washer goes on first so it can go over that gap or over that radius of the bolt. And right there is where the washer is supposed to sit on the inner race of the bearing, on the, fa the fain surface of the bearing. All right, there's a picture of the bearing in the sliding sleeve all cleaned up, so it looks pretty decent right there. So if you put the shim washer on the outside of the stack up, it won't push, it won't shim against that bearing, okay? You need to put the washer on the outside of the stack up and the shim in the middle. And we're gonna beat that dead horse like 10 more times. All right, now we need to figure out how do we shim this thing. It's not really super complicated. It's a little complicated, but if we go to uh, the third figure in the maintenance manual, it shows this right here. All right, that's number five. Those are the um, five millimeter gauges. That's on this on the figure. That's number item number five, and they go inside the sliding sleeve, so they pick up the space so that you could get a micrometer on there and check it. So you're going to measure the outside of those gauges, and that's measurement A. And this is the guy measuring it right there. He has a, a 12 inch caliper, and he has uh, he didn't have all the gauges. He later found the correct gauge and put it in there anyway. I like to use a five to six inch micrometer because it's wide enough, it's deep enough to, to clear the sliding sleeve, but you, can, you can't use a six inch caliper, it won't go in far enough. 
Anyway, let's read that caution real fast. You want to adjust the shim washer. You want to take a look. You want to read all your notes and cautions. All right, this one right here, it says the end measuring has two different gauges. There's two different sizes. One's 15 millimeters long and one's 18 millimeters long. And you need to look at sheet three on this drawing to figure out what you have to know what tool you're supposed to use or otherwise you're going to shim it completely off. I don't think it's possible to shim it uh, if you use the wrong tool. But anyway, we're going to... That's a note you need to know. And we're just going to go over that. Those are the two size gauges, right? And they go over the um, countersunk screw. So in the fork lever, you install the countersunk screw and you put those gauges over the ends. And that's how you pick up the space that you need to. And then you're going to check the measurement there. And that's dimension B. There you go. So he's measuring between the inside of the forked lever with those tools. All right. What else does the special note say? All right. Here's a caution. It should be, I should have made it red, but I didn't anyway. It says risk of malfunction to the flight controls. The washers five and 31 can have different thicknesses. If the thicknesses of the shim washer is not in relation to the washers five and 31, the forked lever can operate incorrectly. Make sure that when you calculate the thickness of the shim washer, you use, you also put in the stack up of the washer as well. Okay. Shim washer and washer together gives you the total measurement that you need. That's important caution. Otherwise it's not going to be shimmed correctly. So once you get your two measurements or your two dimensions, dimensions A and dimension B, it's not super complicated. And if you follow the examples in the maintenance manual, you'll get through it easily, right? You just got to do some math, simple math, right? Okay, each layer of the shim on the shim washer is 0 0.05 millimeters, which is less than two thousandths of an inch. And they want you to adjust it so that it says right here, let's just read number six. Adjust the thickness of the shim washer as necessary. Make sure that the maximum difference between the measured thickness of the shim washer and their thickness after the adjustment is less than 0 0.05 millimeters, which is one peel shim. Okay, they want you to get it as close to what you measured it as. They want you, they want the shim to be exactly as you calculated it should be. Okay. There's the shim washer right there. That's a brand new one. It gives you the part number L671 Mike 7001213. That's in the IPC. If you replace one of the following components, then you have to do an adjustment of the boosted section of the main rotor controls, which means you have to take the main rotor blades off. Okay. Which might open you to a whole nother can of worms and you might have Teflon sleeves coming off, Teflon liners coming out. Um, blade bolt bushings coming out, you know, you might have a whole lot more problems anyway. So if you replace one of these components, the main transmission, the swash plate, the sliding sleeve, the forked lever, the bearing block, the hinge support, the sheets, the control rod, the bearing ring, the carden rings, and the control ring, which is a lot of stuff. Okay. It doesn't say the countersunk screws or the shims to that. So if you just did the shimming, you'd be all right on this job right here. Um, we found the bearing block had a bad bearing and we also had the hinge hinge support had bad bushings that that are inside the bearing block. So I'm going to show you a picture of that real quick. Just swap those out with new ones. Anyway, what, once you got all that done and the rigging's done and you got the shimmying all done, like look at, look at it now. You grab the cyclic levers or the front of the fork lever and you move them side to side. You'll find out that there's really hardly any play at all. And that's normal. Like you can check that on your daily. Granted, everything is hooked up. All the control rods are hooked up, but you'll still be able to feel play if that sh if the shimming is wrong. Okay. Also, it may be correct. You might have calculated the shim correct, but if you put it together incorrectly and you put the washer in front of the shim, um, the other side, like, look, it's supposed to go bolt, shim, washer. But if you go bolt, washer, shim, that shim, when you put it together at first, it may be tight, but after flying for a little bit, you, you, you saw before how that shim goes around the surface of the bearing, the inner race. So it no longer, because that shim washer is, you see how it was so much wider? Well, it could sit down and it could catch the very top of that um, bearing, the fain surface of that bearing. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. All right, that was just a quick video of the shimming procedures on the mixing lever gear unit for the fork lever to the swatch plate sliding sleeve. And like I said, I've seen this done incorrectly a couple times. So if you're putting this together, why don't you get somebody to double check your um, stack up before you jam it in there? All good things, right? And I just went over the manual just very briefly. You need to read the entire manual. It's how many pages is it? I don't know. 
The manual is about 10 pages long. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found some value in the video, and I'll see you guys next time. All right.